Welcome to day number 16 of harvest. Day number six of corn harvest. We ran till about midnight last night. I don't think anybody else on the crew got sleep besides me and Mercado because it's 8.30 now. They already have everything full. <laughs> We're gonna try to get 100 acres done today of corn. That is our goal. We are 19% done with corn harvest as we speak. If we have a good day, we'll be 29% done. Talking blue skies, a little breeze, about 60 degrees. It's gonna be an excellent day to dry some 20% corn. Oh, there's a semi. I was gonna say, where's it at? Listos? Vamos. That's what you were getting. Here goes Dad. Cardo is dumping our first road, load. First road, oh boy. First load of the day. And just like clockwork, Zach is right behind. Okay, he empty. Driving on the pit the other way next time because the wind's all coming this way and all these little fines in the air get in your eyes. I love the smell of the corn dryer. It smells like popcorn. <sighs> Welcome to Zach's farm. This is 140 acres. We pretty much have everything done on this side. I think there's like 110 acres on this side. We've got a little sliver here. And then just over the other side of where Cooper's at, there's like a down, back, down, back, down. And then we'll be done on this side. And then there's 36 acres right there on the corner. So Zach, who's driving the grain car, you know, the one with the beard, the big, big tall Zach, this is actually his family's farm. So when we call this farm Zach's, we're, we're talking about that Zach. We're not waiting long today. We got another load. I don't know all the little nuances of the dryer. So dad and I are just kind of doing the switcheroo in the middle of the road. So I take it from the field. I bring it about halfway home. And then he meets me coming from the bend site. And then so he's unloading everything so he can keep an eye on the dryer and what's going on. Then I just gotta make sure we're getting stuff out of the field back. It works pretty good that way because the dryer has a learning curve to it. And right now I don't have time to learn that learning curve. Are we switching? No, no, let's keep going. Everything I just said, forget. <laughs> Another one. We catch up to dad pretty quick. He's still dumping. Andale, andale. Man, I got a bee's wing in this eye. Is it still in there? There's another one. I think they're basically done now on this side, so we're gonna be jumping across the road to the 36 acres over there. Over here, might as well just make sure everything's unloading right. And I feel sprinkled. Now there's a chance of rain later today, but hopefully this doesn't stick enough to get us out. We made kind of a mess over here. The dryer is not the cleanest item on the farm. This is like cornmeal. Fine. Just a little bitty pieces of crushed corn that fall through here. Ground up corn, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> That's amazing. Try to feed that to some animals. Oh, it looks like we got one little spot dripping some corn out. This literally smells like I'm at a movie theater with popcorn. Oh, it smells so good. The dry pretty simple behind that door is an open air chamber so there's a wall right there and then there's a wall on the outside so corn comes in the top it falls it within that chamber that empty chamber in there has hot air blowing in it and then so that air is nowhere to escape but work its way through the corn to go through these tiny holes and when it works its way through it takes the moisture out then the hot grain that's now dry falls out the bottom it's taken through the conveyor up the leg, from the leg, goes over to the bend, and then the bend, we have the big fans running, blowing air up through the floor, cooling it down. The dryer we have, I'd call it somewhere between a light and uh, not, it's getting, I don't want to say medium duty, I'd say more lighter duty. It can dry stuff decently quick if you're not taking a lot of percentage points off of it. A big dryer, it's gonna be about as tall as that bend. So, just for context sake, then that's going to be able to do about three semis an hour at 10 points, where this will do like a third of a semi an hour at 10 points. If the whole percentage thing is a little confusing, here's a simple analogy. Think of ground beef. You know, hamburger you buy from the store, it's 85% lean, 15% fat. 
So the fat part is what we're looking at here with the moisture. So when I say this corn is 15%, it's 15% moisture, 85% actually corn. 85% lean actual meat, 15% fat, 85% corn, 15% moisture. And they kind of correlate with each other. And it kind of goes the same too with, if you get meat that is too lean, let's say you get some 95.5, there's not enough fat in there, it doesn't taste as good. Corn, when it gets down to 5% moisture, way too dry. Meat, if you buy 73.27 or it's 27% fat. Corn, when it's 27% moisture, way too wet. So just, just think of the fat content of ground beef when you're thinking of corn. And that's the, it, it literally follows hand in hand, it's kinda cool. Dad just called, he said they got done on the one side of the road at Zach's and they're gonna be heading over to the east side. But it's gonna take them a little bit to get that opened up. We have the bean head still sitting outside and if this rain is coming, we'd rather the bean head not get all wet until we get it cleaned. So I'm gonna try to pull that inside just just in case that decides it's gonna make an appearance. Which we will welcome the rain because we are dry. The soil is dry, we need moisture in the ground for the winter time and for next spring for planting season. So we will gladly take the rain. Ooh, we're gonna have a big step coming up on that concrete. Nice and easy. There we go. We're just doing a temporary pull in, otherwise I would normally back this in. But for right now, I just want to get it out of the rain. We have plenty of room in the shed right now. Got the bean head in. We had some decking supplies sitting on that trailer. We got that in, got the semi in. I guess we're just gonna see what this weather does. Coming down nice. I went in and ate lunch. It stopped raining. It's wet now though. I mean, we got some puddles here in the middle of the driveway. So we're rained out of the field, but it sounds like the V1300 grain card's full, the 674 grain card's full, the combine is full. So we're gonna go bring the semis out, get everything out of the field so that way we don't have any grain there. And while it was raining, dad's like, I didn't even think about it. I forgot to turn the auger going into the dryer off. And we think the belt got wet and it slipped. So now the auger that we plugged the other day going from the hopper bottom bend to the dryer, that one is potentially plugged again, but we're gonna find out here in a little bit. Driving, driving, driving. Filling. Man, I don't know what's going on, but I can hardly keep my eyes open on the way over here. We gotta get this truck over to Zach's now because we're gonna pull the corn head home with it. And holy cow, who's driving this? Pulling. I don't like going very fast pulling these trailers because it seems like you get just enough of this going on and not worth it to go an extra 10 mile an hour to lose your back into your truck and go in the ditch. Corn head is in the dry. Oh, well, we had that auger plugged, but come to find out, we just forgot to put the cover back on the other day when we were messing with that when it got plugged and the belts must have got wet, so they just slipped on the pulley. Everything seems to be working now. We've only been filling the hopper bottom bend up to here. So just that bottom cone part has had grain in it, and we have not been able to utilize the rest of this. So right now, it's basically right there. We're gonna run this out. It's supposed to rain all day tomorrow, and then possibly the day after that as well, and we cannot run this in the rain. We can't run the bin fans in the rain either, so we're gonna try to get as much of this empty today, which, as long as everything works, <laughs> We should get everything empty for the rain. What I don't understand about the dryer, why is only that corner rusty? And also, why are there the little fine ground pieces down here, but then there's nothing on this half? That's weird. When the grain gets to the bottom of the dryer, you have these roll meters down here, and that's how fast they're spinning, and it's letting grain go into this auger. You can get all dumping in there, and then that's gonna get taken in the conveyor. Over. Wow, now why is this pad cracked so badly? This side's even higher than this side. That makes no sense. Now while this is still somewhat dry after the little shower we got, I'm gonna get in here with a shovel. We're gonna throw it in the skid loader bucket and then bring it over to the compost pile over there. It's a whole lot nicer cleaning this stuff while it's dry. <laughs> First, after it's been rained on four times and then it's a 37 degree day, the day after Thanksgiving and it's super windy. That, that's not a lot of fun to clean that up and that's always when you're doing this. Now 
That was an incredibly dusty job, but we got it pretty much cleaned up. Good enough for who it's for, we're gonna call it that. Seems like if you can get that stuff picked up while it's dry, you can use the leaf blower to get all the little cracks and crevices out. Otherwise, later, you're in there with a little putty knife and a scraper, and you're on your hands and knees. Not the most enjoyable. I will say, I was on the wrong side of the wind over here. I have fines everywhere. It's going to take a couple hours for that to empty out, and we still have some corn in that semi that we need to get unloaded. I'm going to go eat some, or we're going to call it. It's after lunch, but it's before dinner. Dunch. Winter. I don't know. <laughs> we'll do that and maybe see if we can catch a little workout. We've been sitting in equipment a lot the past few days, haven't been able to move the most. And then, who knows? We might be able to call it a little bit of an early night. My chest is a little sore today, so we're just gonna take it easy around pushing movements. If it's sore, I'm just gonna let it rest. We're gonna start with some rows. We're gonna be pulling the bar right to our chest. We've been sitting like this in the calves, so we're gonna open up the back. Doing sets of 12, nothing crazy on the weight, just Kind of getting that burn. We have to find a better workout outfit than whatever these are, sandals, and some pajama pants. So we did four sets of rows. Now we're gonna have four sets of overhead press. Once again, not going crazy on weight. I don't want to be arching my back way back to get them up. We're just, we're using the muscle and we're challenging ourselves and we're going for the burn. We're doing sets of 12. The real fun one, pull-ups, controlled. We're not kicking our legs, we're not swinging around. We're gonna try to go up as high as we can. We're gonna do as many of them to our sternum as we can. And then we can't go there, we're gonna go chin when we can't go there. And we'll, we'll do a little couple half ones, but then you gas out pretty quick on these. We're gonna try four sets of 12. We're gonna get what we can. Then I guess last but not least, we can't forget about the curls. We gotta do curls. We put out three different rain gauges last night. One of them said seven tenths, one of them said an inch, one of them said an inch and a half, and they're all within 10 feet of each other. So we don't know what we got, but we're rained out in the fields today. So now we got some banking stuff to take care of. Next up, we gotta go to the lawyer's office. We're here. Morning. Morning. Okay. How you doing? Good. 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 Okay, it looks like right here. Last up on the road trip, we're pulling into the case dealership. We need to get an air filter for the combine, maybe. No. Air filter, air filter for the 340 tractor and a belt for Cooper for the combine. Okay, I, I, I think that. I had it all discombobulated. Whoa, 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 what in the world is that thing? The sprayer? <laughs> what? <laughs> I've never seen one like that before. Tyler Patriot. Hello there. Got the goods. Last stop, we're at the cemetery. We have a grave coming up next week, well actually two, where we're going to dig up the caskets and then they're going to move them to a different cemetery, but we need to find where we're gonna be working here. Somewhere over here. Yeah. Man, it's still coming down pretty good out there. We will take this rain though. This is absolutely beautiful. We're gonna be able to take advantage of this rainy day in the office. I have some fertilizer recommendations, I guess we're gonna call it that. We're gonna build those for a few different fields. We have some fields that have problems with the acidity of the soil. So we're gonna be addressing that through liming. So I need to figure out how much lime we're gonna be putting on. Gotta figure out what it's gonna cost and maybe what a potential return on that investment is going to look like. And then I also have a high fertility plan. I'm trying to think of acronyms for these things, but a, a high fertility plan that we are going to do for the 80 acres right behind the house here that the intercrop pot was sitting on. I'm gonna do 40 acres right in the middle, and that way I'll have 20 acres on each side where I have as a control. So then we can really get a nice comparison of, okay, this is what the high fertility did. This is what the normal fertility program that we've been on forever did. And then we can see a difference. And then 
Once we start to get a couple years of data on that, then we can determine, okay, if I put 100, 200, 500, 800 dollars an acre worth of fertilizer or whatever it's going to cost into this high fertility program versus the amount that we normally do, what is the difference in yield? And if there is a difference in yield, what would be the payback period or the return on the investment of putting all that extra money into fertilizer versus just going the same? I'm really excited about this because we have information that we've never had before when it comes to kind of a roadmap of what yields can, what the potential yield is with certain levels of fertilizers in the soil and what ratios and balances. And it's a, it's a really complex puzzle, but we have information now that we've never had before. And so I'm just excited. I'm gonna try it on 40 acres because I feel like trying something on like two acres is just too small of a sample to be able to get a true representation of what it is actually doing. So I'm gonna build these and then we can get into the people who are gonna spread them. So that way we can get, actually get it on. So obviously I'm return on investment oriented when it comes to this. I mean, that is the end name of the game. Getting high yields is pointless if you're spending so much money, you're not actually making anything extra. Like let's say normally you spend $1,000 an acre and you get back $1,200 an acre. So you're making $200 an acre profit. And I could go into the super crazy high management, high fertility where let's say I'm making $2,000 an acre now, but I had to spend 1800 to get there. So I'm still at that $200 profit margin, but I put in way more work. I had a lot more capital invested into this to, to make the same profit margin. So I'm not interested in that, but higher yields ultimately are what is going to drive profitability on the farm because we can only tighten the belt so far. We have bones that, that we absolutely have to have in order to be a structure. So at the end of the day, let's try to get our expenses as low as we can and figure out how to manage those expenses. Maybe we add a little bit, but we take our profit margin from here and can we bring it up to here? I'm kind of looking at this from the perspective of a real estate investor and how they look at, let's say, home. You have a $100,000 house, it's two bedroom, one bathroom. They're looking at it and they're like, you know, this thing's got good bones. These rooms are kind of big. We could build a wall between two of the rooms. Now we have a three bedroom. There's this weird closet kind of thingy off the living room. We could make that into a bathroom. So now all of a sudden our two bedroom, one bathroom house turns into a three bedroom, two bathroom house. We look at the kitchen, we're like, oh, there's no dishwasher, the countertops are pretty bad. Maybe we could just put, say, $20,000 into this home to do all these improvements, kind of make it more user-friendly. And now all of a sudden we turned a $100,000 property into a $160,000 property and we put 20 into it. So we spent money to make more money, but we're doing it with the knowledge experiences that we have of, hey, we've done this in the past and we were able to get more value out of this home. We were able to rent it for more. We were able to sell it for more because we did these things. So I'm trying to look at our farm ground just like we would a home. So instead of me building a wall to build another bedroom or adding another bathroom, I'm looking at it as, well, could we fix the acidity in the soil. That would be like adding a wall in the bedroom. And then after we have the acidity fixed, could we put some extra potassium, extra phosphorus, extra sulfur, extra zinc, extra magnesium, whatever we may be deficient in. That's kind of like building my bathroom. And so then now I have my lower value piece of ground that has normal fertility. But after I just do the a couple simple fertility fixes to it, and I, I invested a few dollars into it, now can I have that higher value out of it, be able to get more because we had knowledge and were able to take that and say, oh yeah, this is this is what this piece of ground is missing. Put it into it, and I feel like that could change the farm. I really don't know, but I'm doing a lot of research and finding a lot of high yield environments and trying to figure out the data. Like the 
the behind the scenes stuff that is not on the main data page showing the results. Like I wanna know what processes they did to get there. And that's the stuff I've been digging into. And that is what we are going to try. I don't know if it's going to work. I really don't, but I have a good feeling it will based off the research that I've done and the results other people have got. Soil is different everywhere you go. Weather is different everywhere you go. So those are all going to be factors. So will I get the exact results that I've seen from these studies? Probably not. But do I think I will get results that are on the positive end? Yes. And that is enough for me to have enough conviction to try it, which is what we're going to do. And that's all we can do. And we can just continue to keep trying because I'm the type, I feel like if you never quit trying, you never lose. And I mean, the critic is always right until they're not. So I can't always be super critical of everything. I just have to use discernment and have the ability to really self-reflect on what we're doing and if it is working or if it's not. I don't wanna get emotional with this. It's just, we're going off facts, we're going off logic and how things actually do, not necessarily how we feel about it. Today we have four sets of 12 squats. We're gonna start with our heaviest set and then once we start to fail, we'll just keep lightening up the weight as we go. Just trying to keep the intensity the same. It should be really challenging to get 12. I gotta be careful on the intensity with these because I'll go too hard and then I'll want to throw up. And once you get that throw up feeling, and you're done. We got done with the squats. I forgot to film it, but we did two sets of eight deadlifts as well. Now, if you are trying to emulate some of my training, be my guest with the lifts that I'm doing. I, I've literally done these lifts the entire time I've been training, but the intensity is going to be different. I've been training since I've been 14 years old. So I've been training for 12 years. So my ability to push myself is going to be different than somebody who's just starting. If you're doing a lift and you get to the point where, you're, let's say you're bench pressing and you get it up and it's like, that's good enough. You don't have to keep pushing through that. That is enough stimulation to produce muscle growth. It just needs to be a consistent effort throughout the week. I try to get two upper body lifts in a week, two lower body, like four sets of each for any beginner or somebody been lifting for even two or three, four years, that is going to be enough stimulus. I mean, I've been lifting for 12 and this is enough stimulus for me right now. Uh, granted, I'm detrained right now because I haven't been going the most intense for like the last two, but nonetheless, we, we don't have to overcomplicate it. We're not training to be Mr. Olympias here. And if you are, you probably shouldn't be taking my advice. We're not training to be world's strongest man. If you are, you sh probably shouldn't be taking my advice. And if you're trying to be a world-class power lifter, you, you probably shouldn't be taking my advice. We all kind of have the semi we prefer. Dad likes the red Volvo. It's the quietest, the smoothest. I'll give him that. But I prefer shifting more in the gray Freightliner over the red Freightliner. Because this has a, I don't even know what you call it, a 10 speed, but then it's got a high low. So then you got another set of five gears. So it's like a 15 speed. I, I don't know. We got dad coming in with his first load already. Sounds like they're forecasting more rain at the end of the week. So we're gonna try to get as much corn done this week as we can. If we don't have to dry it a lot, we can do over a hundred acres a day. But if we have to get dry some stuff that's like 24%, our dryer will only do about 300 bushels per hour at that rate. And uh, we can't do a lot when we have that wood of corn, at least not with this dryer. 300 bushels per hour would basically be the equivalent of we could harvest about an acre and a half per hour. So we'd have our wet holding so we could store a little bit more, but the dryer would be able to basically process like 15 acres a day at that speed. <laughs> oh no, he's coming our way. <laughs> just got done with the west side of the road at Zach's, so now we are just doing a little 36 acre piece right over here. I don't think it's a little tacky out, got a little bit of stuff stuck to the tires, but not really much mud, so we're going for it. Oh yeah, rocking the bitch. 
Got Zach back there sneaking up on me too. We are full now. Oh, come on, Granny Lou. There we go. There we go. Another nice thing about the gray freight liner with the red freight liner is we have Granny Lou in this. So when we take off, kind of a soft spot in the field, you can just creep out of it without just feeling like you're riding the crud out of your clutch. Just like clockwork. And that didn't take Dad very long to empty that load. It's kind of fun coming up to the driveway because we go down a hill, so we speed up, and as we come up this and make our turn, we got a downshift. Sixth to fifth, fifth to fourth. All right, let's see what we can do here. Go corner wide. Now I gotta go all the way to the left side over here. Stay on the grass, off the grass, I mean. There we go. Now we can ride this up through here. We're gonna have to downshift into third in a second. Come on. There we go, grind them till you find them. West leg is on, turn on the pit. We're supposed to have buttons outside to turn all that stuff on just right when we get out of the semi. That way we don't have to come into the shack, but lawsuit stuff's kind of holding back the process of getting the electrical finalized as well. When stuff is 100% finalized around here, the pit should be set up to the point where I can literally dump that as fast as I can crank the cranks open, which should take about 30 seconds for the whole trailer, and then shut everything and leave. But with the way it's set up right now, I'm probably sitting here for, oh, six minutes or so before I can pull off the pit, before it settles down enough where I can drive off. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's not nearly the setup that it was designed to be. It was supposed to be a 30 second dump and leave. Now we're like at a six minute dump and leave. And that's not even running it all the way empty. If I sat and waited for everything to empty out, I'd probably be here for over 15 minutes. What I mean by it's gotta settle down is see how it's piled way up over the grates. So if I were to drive through it, my back wheels would basically just run it over and then it would smear it out all the way onto that concrete. Man, that's not wasting any time. <laughs> Now normally I'd go that way, but I am not gonna go behind that wagon, so we're gonna go the other way. Oh, we got 63,000 pounds on. Boogity, boogity, boogity. It is not taking us very long to get done with this farm. We're right at the halfway point. Cooper's already got all this done in a extremely short amount of time. So we just got that left, basically right over the top of the hill. Then once we get done here, we'll hop on this road. We'll go a mile north and we'll go a mile, two miles over. We're basically going right over there to the north farm. You little size comparison of that green card compared to a semi. <laughs> That little gray cart looks tiny by the combine. <laughs> One big unload on the go of the combine will almost fill that grain cart completely. Just pulled back onto the pit. Dad called. Sounds like Cooper maybe plugged the rotor on the combine. He's not for sure. But we're going to empty out the semi. We'll empty everything out in the pit. So that way we don't have stuff sitting here running. We've just been leaving the pit run the whole time while we've been driving because when you get here, it's still got corn in the bottom of it, or it literally just ran out. Looks like it just ran out. So hopefully we didn't plug the rotor, <laughs> which they're a lot easier to unplug on these new combines than the older combines, because the old ones you had to get in there with like a big four foot wrench and do it manually. The new ones, you can rock it from inside the cab with buttons. False alarm with the combine. I don't know what happened, but they said they got it running. A load over there too. When I was a little boy, we'd always use those grain carts to fill the semis in the driveway because we'd take an auger out of the bin, dump it in that, and then we'd use that to fill this. So while we were doing it, there was usually either dad or grandpa standing up here while the other one was in the cart. So that way he'd kind of help guide him and how full he needed to be. And it would always drive me nuts because dad would just get up here and he'd be walking down this the whole way of the trailer. And oh, as a little kid standing down there, I was terrified for dad. Nah, 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 nah. I'm not as good as it as him. I'm a little bit of a chicken because I cross my feet. He just walked normal. The one who's really crazy when it comes to heights is Cooper. When we were little climbing trees and stuff, 
I had to go pretty high and I'm, I was a pretty good climber. Cooper would just go another 10 feet higher. And I'm like, how's that branch even holding your weight right now? Aren't you afraid of that thing snapping? Like, he would go out on the thin ones. The boy's wild. Oh boy, we left the gray freight liner out in the rain the other day and water must have gone down the stacks and then we fired it up going down the road. Now we got black soot juice that dried. I think what they got left right there should fit on me. And if it won't all fit on me, it'll for sure fit on the carts. As a kid, this was the best thing to do in the semi while you were waiting for it to get full. Ah! How are you doing? How are you doing? Woo! You okay? Then he started to realize why dad wore pants in his boots when we were little, because We'd always wear shorts, but your shoes would fill up with a bunch of corn. But when you have pants on and cowboy boots, nothing gets in there. It's kind of funny because like in the last five years, dad went from wearing pants every single day. Like I literally never saw his legs other than inside of the house when he was walking around in shorts. And I wore shorts every day, but then now we flipped. He wears shorts every day during the summertime and I wear pants. Hey, what do we got here? Is that a red corn? What's wrong with this one? Must have blew a blood vessel or something. Why is it red? Can't say I've ever seen a red corn before. There we go. Cooper just got done over here on Zach. So now we're headed over there. Holding her up. I don't know if he's going to trailer the head over there or if they're just going to try to block traffic. It's about a three mile drive. That's about as far as we like to go blocking traffic. We got the Goodyear LW 1400s on the back there, and then we got the 1250s rolling on the carts. That's a long way down. See how the Hertz ramp up slowly on these motors? They're on what's called a soft start because they take so much energy right off the bat to start. If we turn them on, like, all at once. Then they basically like surge the electrical box from my understanding and then I take it that blows its fuse and fuses and everything else. So they have what's called a soft start. So it just slowly ramps the electricity into full power. So it takes like 20 seconds to fully turn on versus just like instant turn on. It's kind of like a light switch. It just imagine if you turn it on then the light just slowly got brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter over the next 20 seconds. It works the exact same way with the motors out there. Welcome to the North Farm. We're just starting to get the outside opened up here. Cooper's going along very carefully along those telephone poles. I think that one right there is the one he nicked with the planter a couple years ago. Dad and Ricardo did a road fill right there. Cooper got a little spot opened up now, so we should be able to get the semis into the field. We have mile long rows on this field. We get a lot done here. Either we got back here fast or dad had some issues, but he's still dumping. Oh. Let's see how dad's making out over there. Bet he's getting a moisture sample. Since we're in a different field, different moisture, even though it was the same hybrid we were just in. We started our planting on the North Farm. So that was the very first farm we planted. Then we went to Zach. So those were in the phase one of the planting before we got our first rain. So should be similar. He empty, we full. Oh boy. Yes. What do we got here, mom? Pizza. What kind? Meat lovers, I think. <sighs> ah, grease. It's about 46 degrees out right now. We got all that rain, so the ground is you know, still pretty tacky on top. With that temperature lowering, those stocks are just wet. The combine is having some issues. For whatever reason, we're spitting a bunch of grain out the back of the combine, so it sounds like someone's going to come out in the morning and help us figure out what's going on. I've been trying to get a hold of Ryan, the combine mechanic. He must be busy with some other customers right now because we haven't been able to get a hold of him. Otherwise, he'd come out and take a look at it. But we got that semi full. I think we got the V1300 grain, grain cart full. We got that semi full. Dad's gonna stay up pretty late tonight, I guess. Run the dryer, try to get the hopper bottom bin. It's about empty, otherwise we're gonna be about plugged up in the morning by being full here with wet grain. Pretty good day. Got done his ax. Got everything opened up on the North Farm. We have a good running day tomorrow. We should get done over there. I stayed out and visited with Dad in the dryer shack for about an hour and a half. It's about 10.40. I'm gonna go and go visit with Edward and Ava for a little bit. Dad said he's gonna run this till about midnight, one in the morning maybe, just try to get it down. So that way we're not bottlenecked in the morning and we can get some loads. Cooper's trying to get 100 acres a day done. That's been his goal. 
We'd like to do that, but we're just kind of bottlenecked up because we can only use about 3,000 bushels of storage in the 18,000 bushel bin just due to the concrete underneath being crap. And Dad didn't want to put anything in the overhead tonight because then every that's kind of our overflow during the day. We can have an extra 5,000 bushels of storage up there plus the three semis and the two grain carts. So, I mean, we can get a, a, a good chunk done, but you know, if you get 50 acres a day done, you get 50 acres a day done. Sometimes you just gotta roll with the conditions you have and you don't always get what you want. But you know, that, that's the fun of it. Just imagine if we always got everything we always wanted in life. Like sure, we'd have fun for a little bit, but then like it takes the challenge out of it and like the stuff that you remember, the, the most memorable things in your life are often the most challenging things. Just think of when you were doing things when you were a little kid and it was just like a miserable condition and you look back at it now and you just laugh and you're like, how did we even get that done <laughs> when we dealt with that? Like I always think back, when I was a little boy, we didn't have a heated shop. We had the heated garage off of the shop or off the house at dad's house and you could fit a semi in it with no trailer on it and it was basically touching the wall at the hood and the back wheels were almost touching the door when you shut it. We could fit our Massey 860 combines inside of it if you let half the air out in the tires. It would just barely go under the garage door. And then anything else we had to do here in the big machine shed and it was so cold I have no idea how dad and grandpa worked on anything. But they did it. When we had this building full of corn and we had our other bins full of corn and those got full. The heated shop over here at my house, we ended up putting like a 20,000 bushel pile of corn inside of that. We had a 20,000 bushel pile of corn in the middle of my yard that sat out there all winter long and because we didn't want to bring it to the co-op. So we literally a pile in the middle of the yard. I'll have to see if I can find the pictures of that. We had a snowstorm coming, snowstorm coming on the last field when we were at Bill's when I was a little boy. And we were worried about getting done because if we didn't get done before that snowstorm, winter was going to set in and we were going to have to wait till springtime. So grandpa set up a wagon and an auger in the corner of the field. And when we got full, we dump into that auger and we literally had a pile sitting in the field. Then after the ice storm came in, then we went and cleaned it up and brought it over here. But it's stuff like that, like that is not ideal by any means. None of that was. And it was miserable in the moment and it was embarrassing because why do we have a 10,000 bushel pile of corn sitting in our field that just got iced on? Why do we have a 20,000 bushel pile of corn sitting in the middle of the yard? We can't put equipment in the shed because we have a pile of corn sitting in there in both sheds. <laughs> like people looked at it and laughed and <laughs> like it wasn't the most fun cleaning that stuff up. It wasn't the most fun looking at it and as you're doing it, you're like, why are we doing this? But then now looking back, it's like that is the stuff you remember and that is the stuff that hits closest to home. And it just makes you appreciate how far you have came now that you don't have to do that anymore. But like, that is what you sit and smile about. Not the fact that, hey, I'm in a nicer tractor today than I was 10 years ago. Like, well, yes, you're appreciative of it, but you still remember that 4010 that had the loosest power steering you've ever experienced in your life when you were six years old and you could only drive it 10 miles an hour down the road because you literally could not keep it in a straight line. Like that just lights up a different part of the heart and different part of the soul. It just, sometimes we just need to sit and appreciate what we have now because that is our greatest gift. The, the, the power of the present. I will say one thing that's really nice is the fact that we have lights over here and lights over there. When you look at the Ben site from five miles away, it just looks like a town over here. And we only have like literally 30% of the lights on that are supposed to be over there. So when it's all done, that's gonna be like a, a city. I don't know if we got maybe 50 acres done today. Pretty decent day for the time we had running and kind of the conditions that we had. So I think we're 25% done with corn harvest. That's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.